Bible Grounded. This is session two, where we're going to be discussing what we know as hermeneutics. All hermeneutics means is how to interpret the Bible. So we are going to take a quick look at five simple principles to help us understand how to read the Bible and how to understand the Bible. The first principle we want to look at is the literal principle. Well, automatically, I want to say that there's controversy over this because a lot of people will wish to apply symbolic language to the Bible. Symbolic language is in the Bible. I want to make that very clear. There is plenty of symbolism, plenty of word pictures in the Bible. But when we say the literal principle, what we want to do is we, we want to understand that we are to understand the Bible normally. Just read it normally, just like you would most any other book. Most any other book will have symbolic language in it too. When we come across, for instance, in the Psalms. In the Psalms, it will say, He covers thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou rest. This is not to say that God is Big Bird. What this means is that God is like a mother hen and that he covers us with his feathers, with his wings, and he protects us like a mother hen. So that's symbolic language, the sort that we understand in the scriptures. And we understand it simply just by looking at the context and look at, looking at what's being um, expressed. Do not confuse literalism with letterism. We are, are not saying that we apply letterism to the Bible and understand it in a way that makes God look silly. God is not a giant chicken. What we mean by the literal principle is that we just read it normally. There is symbolic language in the Bible, such as when we are reading the book of Revelation, we will come across a passage that describes a giant red dragon that has seven heads and ten horns. We can understand that this is symbolic language in the Bible because in the real world there's nothing like that normally. What we want to do is we want to let the context and precedents establish how we're, we are supposed to understand the Bible, the passage that we are in. We are going to take a look at another principle in the Bible that we will apply to that help us understand it, and that is the historical principle. The historical principle simply means watch the background. All scripture is for us, but not all is about us. There is plenty in the Bible that we can read that applies to ancient Israel that does not apply to the modern church today or as us as individuals. We also have to look at things like the background such as some of the Old Testament chapters and passages and look at Bible notes, look at the culture, look at the geography, look at the language. So look at the entire background of, of what's being said, and it will inform how we might understand the passage, such as, since we're talking about the end times here, concerning the end, Jesus gives us four or five examples or stories of the ancient Hebrew wedding tradition. There is a reason why he gave us these examples, and so it would behoove us to understand how this ancient Hebrew wedding tradition works. What's the historical principle? What we do not want to do is we do not want to apply Western understanding, modern understanding to those wedding traditions and look at it through that lens because we are going to come up short and we are going to come up incorrect in our understanding and our conclusions. So we want to apply what we have learned about the Bible and Israel, for instance, historically so that we can understand the passage as best we can. So we have to look at the background. We want to look at words. That's the grammatical principle. Not just words, but the whole passage. The way, for instance, the Greek works is not just 
individual words. Um, our English language is a mishmash of words that have a Latin background, some have a Germanic background, and some have a Greek background. And it's kind of a mishmash of words. The Greek is much more specific, and there are tenses that are past, present, and future. There are tenses that are masculine, neuter, or feminine. And also the sentence structure in the way the Greek is written will inform the understanding of the whole passage. So we need to look at lexicons and all kinds of helps, commentaries, and so forth to make sure that we are understanding it correctly and not just use our strong numbers because much more informs the understanding of, of words and how we understand, uh, how we uh, want to interpret a word. The whole verse might apply to how we understand a single word. So it's very important that we take a look at this from Greek experts so that we don't muddle our understanding. So that's very important. But the other principle that we want to understand, that we want to apply, um, this is one that we should use daily in just our regular reading, particularly when we come to difficult passages, and that's the synthesis principle. Synthesis just means we synthesize, synthesize all the verses, all the books together. And, and we take verses from here and verses from here, we compare them, we can do some research on a passage that we're in and see how Old Testament and New Testament other verses from other books all inform the passage that we're in. We can do this because it is, it is the same Holy Spirit who authored the entire Bible. There are going to be no contradictions. There might be a slightly different phrasing or way of informing, just as we look at the four Gospels, and the four Gospels are not word for word verbatim exactly the same, because the Holy Spirit brought things to remembrance of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John so that they would recall what they saw and they were writing down and recording with the help of the Holy Spirit exactly from their memories what happened and what was significant to them from their perspective, much as uh, the example that has been given before of uh, an intersection with four corners on it and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are standing on each of the four corners. So that if he describes a vehicle driving by, Luke on one corner might see the car going by from left to right. Matthew across the street will see it from right to left. Those two passages are not contradictory. They are a matter of perspective. But the scripture will always make it clear when we look at these understandings what exactly is going on or what perspective is going on. Um, a better example, probably, of this is the difference between the Olivet Discourse, which we will get into, Matthew's rendering of it, and what we look at in Luke. Mostly, the difference is that Matthew 24, we will see a huge portion of that is from the perspective of the Mount of Olives upon the hill. What we see recorded in Luke is that Jesus was standing in the temple and he was lecturing and he was speaking to a large crowd and he was sharing some things concerning the end. And then they departed and went up on the Mount of Olives. And on the Mount of Olives, Peter, James, John, and Andrew were asking Jesus for clarification. And that's what we have in Matthew 24. That's why we can read some differences in the timing of things in the two lectures between Luke and Matthew. They look like, boy, they're both the Mount of Mount of Olives um, discussion here about the end times, but they're not the same. So we will get into that and look at those differences, but that's a prime example right there on perspective. But synthesis means that we know, because the text describes Luke, Jesus talking in the temple, and then it describes him leaving and going up to the mountains. And then in Matthew, it describes him going up on the hill and then we go into Mark and we find out that Andrew was with Peter, James, and John. So we, we can put all of these passages together. And we, we can get the timing of it all down pat where we understand exactly what happened when and what Jesus was trying to communicate if we care to take the time to do that and not be lazy. So that's the synthesis principle. All the scripture will work together. 
And then finally, with prayer, hopefully you've been studying and, and reading the passage and praying about what the passage means and how to understand it, and also how to apply it personally in your life. We want to make it personal. Even though the passage might not be directed at you, and Jesus might not be speaking directly at you in the passage, there's something to carry away from that passage that will draw us into a deeper understanding of the Lord and will draw us into a closer relationship, a closer walk with the Creator. So those are the principles that we want to apply, that we want to look at. Again, it's the literal principle, the historical principle, the grammatical principle, synthesis principle, and the application principle. Those are all very important. We will be doing this again um, next time and in the future with more PowerPoints and probably get a little bit more elaborate as we go. And hopefully these PowerPoints won't be too boring, less boring than just staring just at my face. And we'll have some graphics and so forth that might help to understand where we look at different events taking place when in a timeline, for instance. So again, please share this with your friends. Please subscribe. Let others know. Don't be greedy. And if you like it, share it on your Facebook page. Share it with friends and like it. And make your comments below. We'll try to address your questions and your comments in future posts. Thank you very much.